Hey there campers, it's Martha Burtis, one of your camp co-directors here with another quick WordPress tutorial. Today what we're going to be talking about are themes and the theme of your website or your WordPress blog is basically what makes your site look like it does. And by default all of you when you installed your um, blogs on hippie hosting for you UMW students um, should have had a theme called 2011 applied and um, that's just the default theme in WordPress right now. It's a great theme. Um, you may want to stay with it, but we encourage you to take a look around and maybe find a theme that's a little bit more personalized for you. Um, I'm going to show you a little of what you can do with 2011, and then I'm going to show you how to install other themes. Um, but the first thing you want to do whenever you're working on your website is log in. Um, and there are lots of different ways to do that. I'm going to tell you two quick, easy ways um, so that you never get lost. If, um, if you go to your sites now and your theme is still 2011, um, and you scroll down over here in your sidebar, you should see a button that says Login. And if you click on that, that'll bring up the login screen. But the other trick that it's really good to know um, is that if you type in after your URL just slash WP dash ADMIN or admin, that will also um, be a way to always get to your administrative back panel, and if you're not logged in, it'll first log you in. And the reason why it's good to know this is that sometimes when you apply a new theme, that little login link that you see right now in the sidebar might not be there. Um, but don't worry, you can still log into your site. Um, you just have to know this little trick. So it's slash WP dash admin um, at the end of your URL. And if you want, you can just bookmark that, stick it in your browser toolbar, make it really easy to always be able to find. So I'm going to go ahead and click that, and I'm going to uh, type in my user ID and password that I chose when I was setting up my site here. Um, go ahead and save that password. And this is the back end of WordPress, which we looked at a little bit in the last tutorial I did <clears throat> when I was showing you how to add or edit posts. Like I said, today what we're going to be talking about is themes. Um, and what I like to do whenever I'm working on my blog, actually, is right up here I'm in a tab that's a, that's my dashboard. This is the back end of my website. I like to open up another tab and I'll just slide that over next to it. You can do that in just about any, you should be able to do that in any modern web browser, Chrome, Firefox, even Internet Explorer. Um, it should be Control T or Command T on the Mac to open up a new tab. Um, and in this other tab, I'm just gonna open up the front end of my blog. This is a nice technique because it makes it a little bit easier when you make changes in the back end to just quickly jump over to the front front end, click your refresh button, and see what happened. And especially when you're changing themes, that's a nice, nice way to quickly and easily see um, the effect of the theme that you've installed. So let's start by just looking at what you can do with 2010. And all of your theme options are going to be under your appearance. Um, sidebar menu. So I'm going to go over there and um, and 2010 is a special theme. It comes with built-in theme options. Not all themes do, but a lot of them do. Um, and so I'm just going to click on this theme options link. And 2010 has two different color schemes that I can go with. Kind of a, a lighter color scheme, color scheme or a darker color scheme. Um, I can also change the colors of my links if I want to have something other than that standard blue. And I can choose whether or not I want to have my content on my left, my content on the right, or no sidebar at all. Um, and that, that'll be the default layout whenever I create a new post or page. And in addition, you'll see under theme options, there's another menu item over here for background. I can click on that. If I want, I can upload an image to be the background of my website. Um, this is usually most effective if you get an image that tiles um, because then it will be a smooth background. Um, if you upload like a photograph, it'll show it once and then it'll show it again next to it and next to it and next to it and that can look kind of jumbled and messy. Um, but if you want, you could also just select a different color for your background. So I'm going to go ahead and just choose this kind of maroon, save my changes. And then I've also got underneath background, I've got header. Um, and 2011 comes with some nice built-in um, header images. You can choose to randomize those images or you can pick one of them. Or if you want, you can upload your own image for your header. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, let's see. This is just a picture of our campfire yesterday. It's kind of a silly thing to put in the header, but it'll give you an idea at least of what's possible. I'm going to click upload and my, my little uh, 
circle up here and my tab is spinning around so I know that it's working and down here I can see it's uploading. And then it gives me this nice tool to crop uh, my header any way that I want. So I'm just going to crop it like this so that we can see everybody who was in the hangout yesterday in their funny costumes. Um, I can choose whether or not I want to display the text on the header or not. The reason you wouldn't is if you actually made a custom header for your site and you put the title of your blog in it, you might turn off the display text because you wouldn't want that text on top of the image. Um, and then I'm just going to save my changes. And like I said, I'm going to jump over to that second tab. <clears throat> and now when I click refresh, the changes I made, I can immediately see my maroon background and my new header image. So I encourage you to play around a little with 2011. You can do a lot by just changing the header image, the background color, um, and, and, and you can have some uh, make some pretty dramatic changes to your site. But for some of you, that may not be enough. You may want to go a step further and really um, put a new theme on your site, and that's great. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how you do that. There's two primary ways that you would install a theme on your site. One of them is to literally install it directly from the back end of your website. So if I click on themes under appearance, you'll see I have a tab up at the top that says install themes. And what this does is actually give me um, an interface to search the official WordPress theme repository, which I actually have open here in another tab, and I'll put the link to it um, in the YouTube video when I upload this tutorial. This is the theme repository. You can browse it here, or you can search it here in the back end of your site. Sometimes what I like to do is browse it here, find the name of the site, the theme that I like, and then go back to my install themes and put that name here to find it. Because um, sometimes it's hard. I mean, they're, they're doing a better job of making it easier to filter themes um, with this interface, but sometimes it's hard to find the exact same theme in both places. But let's just say we're, our favorite color is orange. We're looking for a three column theme um, that has theme options, which means you might be able to customize the header or the background, or it, it depends. And then I'll choose find themes. So WordPress has returned. I don't know why they think this is orange, but whatever. Um, returned a couple of themes for me to choose from, and I kind of like this one. It's got a travel kind of uh, vibe going, and all I do is I click install. It's going to ask me to confirm that, and I can hit, once that's done, I just hit activate, and now if I jump over to my blog and refresh it, it'll look totally different. I have this whole new travel theme applied to my site, um, and this theme like when we searched for it we looked for themes that come with theme options and sure enough I now have some new things over here I still this theme still lets me choose a some sort of header or background but in addition um, it has these social media settings I'm not exactly sure what that's gonna be um, whether or not we, yeah, it's you can put some widgets in so people can like your page um, on face uh, on Facebook or I don't know tweet out your page you, I'll be honest with you, every theme is different in terms of these options, so you have to experiment a little bit. Um, and that's good. It, you can't really break anything. Um, themes layer on top of the content on your site. So even if you go were to go to your site right now and like these posts were just gone because for some reason the theme wasn't displaying them, the posts haven't disappeared, they haven't been deleted, they're always still there in the database that runs your site. The theme, just for one reason or another, has a different way of displaying content. Um, which is fine. You need to experiment. You need to try some things out. Try out a couple different themes. See what those options do. Find one that really works for you. Um, so that's the easiest way probably to install a theme is to, um, is to just use this built-in um, install feature in conjunction with, if you like, the theme repository. But in addition, you can actually um, get a theme from lots of other places. In addition to the WordPress repository, lots and lots of developers put up themes on their own websites or company websites. So how would you go about finding those? Well, the simplest thing is to just Google something like cool WordPress themes. And when I do that, I get like 20 million results because there are so many WordPress themes out there. Um, and if you want, you can just kind of browse through here until you find one you like. In addition, I kind of like to look at some of the more curated um, lists of great themes that are out there. And one that I really like is put out by Smashing Magazine, which is at smashingmagazine.com. And every year they do an edition of the best top free WordPress themes. I should mention all of the themes that, you know, are in here that I'm 
was looking at in the repository are free, but you can pay for themes. We're not asking you to do that, but sometimes when you, you know, developers will come up with really slick, fancy themes, and then they actually attach a price to it because they've spent so much time on that. Um, but the Smashing Magazine is a great directory, is a great listing of themes, and it's broken out into different kinds of sites. So if you wanted a site that really was a portfolio of your photography, these are portfolio themes. Um, further down, we've got site themes that are more aimed at business or corporate websites. Here's one that's actually for an academic website, like for a university. Um, I'll keep going here. Minimalist themes, so themes that really are very, very basic, simple, and elegant designs. Um, go in. What else have we got? These are still our minimalist. What have I missed? A, there we go. Blogs and personal websites. So this might be a category that you guys are most interested in. There's lots of different um, themes listed here. And Smashing has actually kind of described what those themes do and um, what some of the special features of them might be. So I kind of like this one. It's called Skeptical. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And it takes me to the website for Woo Themes, which is a big theme developer for WordPress, where I can download and this big button here. It says download this free theme. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. I have to register to do this. I actually already have a, um, a Woo Themes um, account, but let's see if I can't just fill this out quickly. Oops. Because I'm not sure I remember my password. So go ahead and submit that. It's just going to take a minute. Most themes, you're not going to have to register for a site to do that. Um, but that one I did. I registered. And now it says, oh, now we're ready to download your site, uh, download your theme. I'm going to stick it in my downloads directory. You can put it wherever you want, just as long as you can find it again. And I'm going to choose Save. And what it downloads is a zip file, which is just an archive file of a bunch of different files um, and when it you unzip it um, it kind of explodes all of those files so you have all of the files associated with the theme we're not actually going to unzip this you don't want to unzip this right now what you want is just the zip file because what we're going to do is upload it into our site and WordPress will unzip it for us and install the theme and then we just activate it just like we did with the one we installed directly from the back end so that's still downloading. I can see the little monitor down here in the bottom left hand corner. It's almost done and there it is. So now I'm going to jump back to my WordPress tab where I had my install themes tab open and I'm going to choose upload instead of search which is what we were doing before. I'm going to choose upload and then choose file and I know it's in my downloads so there it is skeptical and just click install now. And that'll just take a minute while well, now it has to upload that file. I just downloaded it, now it has to upload it. It's going to take a little bit. While that's going on, let me just talk a little bit more and emphasize a few other things about themes. So themes, as I said, completely dictate what your site's going to look like. Um, it, they determine what text styles are being used, um, maybe how images are laid out in the header or the background. They may have special stylings for images that you insert into pages or posts. In addition, if there are sidebars in your theme, that will be built right into the theme and you can, um, you can determine what you want to go in those sidebars. And the way you do that, while this is uploading, I'm just going to jump over and show you, excuse me, show you is, um, I think I just got the hiccups. I hope it stops. <laughs> um, so over under appearance, you'll see I have another link that says widgets. And widgets are just little pieces of content that you can stick in areas of your, areas of your site, usually sidebars. Um, so right now, if I go back to my site, I have a sidebar on the left and I have a sidebar on the right. And you'll see I have these little blocks of content. Those are my widgets. And sure enough, if I go and look here under primary sidebar, here are the things in, my, in this theme by default that go into this sidebar. Search, recent posts, recent comments, archives, categories, and this thing called Meta. Meta is a really important widget. It's the widget that will give you the link to log in. So if you're missing that login link, drop your little Meta widget, which will be over here on the left, into a sidebar and you'll have it back. I'm going to just drag these over to the left and you'll see they just disappear from my sidebar. And now if I jump back over to my site and refresh my left hand side, all it has in it is Meta because that's the only thing I left there. Um, 
And then I can just really play around with these widgets and decide what I want to put over there. Um, maybe I want to have a list of my recent posts so that people can find that, as well as a list on maybe on the other side of my recent comments. So let me refresh. So now I have recent posts on the left, recent comments on the right. And below this on the left, I also have that meta widget that I left in. In the next tutorial, we're going to teach, be teaching a little bit about what are called plugins, which are ways to extend the capabilities of WordPress. Um, and sometimes plugins, when you install them, give you widgets, additional widgets that you can drop in here depending on the plugin. For example, if you were to install a Flickr plugin, a plugin that integrates with your Flickr um, account where you upload images, you might have a widget that allows you to display your latest Flickr photo. Um, so widgets very often complement plugins, not always, but a lot of the time. So let's see where we are back here with our themes. I wonder if I, when I clicked away, I might have... Oh, that wasn't good. When I clicked away, I stopped my upload. Um, but I think you get the basic idea. If I upload this file and, and click install now, it's going to install it just like the other theme that I installed before, and I'll then get an activate link to turn it on. Um, and I'll go ahead and do that and put a link to what Skeptica looked like so you guys can see the, uh, the effect on this site um, after I'm done making this because I don't want to make you guys sit here and watch me upload a file. Um, but that's basically it. Play around with themes, play around with 2011, play around with installing other themes, have fun with it. Like I said, you really can't do anything that can't be fixed. Um, if you install a theme and you're like, oh my god, what happened to my site? Go back to 2011. Um, that'll always take you back to the default. You can always go back to um, this Manage Themes and say, oh, activate, here's 2011, activate that. Um, and that'll take your site back to its original flavor. Even remembers that header that I put in. So have at it. If you have any questions, you know where to find Alan and me. Some of your camp counselors might be able to help too. Um, but we are always available to help um, by email or Twitter. Um, and uh, we look forward to seeing your newly themed blogs.